Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence is a man that uh, a week and a half ago had a crazy week in his life is Kyle Bokniak, of course, took on Charles Rosa at UFC Fight Night 81. And, of course, Kyle, unfortunately, did not get the victory. But Kyle, appreciate the time. We had you on the show uh, two weeks ago, right after your, your win at CES MMA. And at the end of the interview, we, we talked about the fact that after your fight, after your win at CES, your management started reaching out to UFC saying, look, we're ready to, to take on Charles Rosa. Of course, uh, Gusto Mendez ends up, uh, you know, take that fight. Then he pulls out of it. So kind of tell us the backstory of how everything kind of uh, took place. <clears throat> well, um, immediately after my fight with CES, um, you know, I, I, I finished my opponent in the first round. And um, I knew that UFC was coming to Boston. And, um, you know, I was always trying to be optimistic and, you know, if the stars aligned, it would be perfect scenario if I finish my opponent in the first round and I don't have any injuries. And if Jimmy Heights um, ends up pulling out, hopefully maybe my management can put a bug in their ear and I can get the quick replacement. So that was my uh, prediction all along for 2015. I was hoping that would happen. Um, and sure enough, you know, Heights ends up getting hurt. Um, they had a Gusto Mendez. Um, he ended up pulling out. They replaced him. Um, so I didn't. I didn't think I would get the call. You know, Mendez got the call, and I was like, "All right, well, you know, it's not my time. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just try to keep my weight light, just in case that you know they call me on January 30th, because I know this is UFC then. So, um, you know, Mendez got hurt on Wednesday, so that left me four days before the fight. I ended up did getting the call. So I, I was keeping my weight pretty light still, just in case if I got the call. And, you know, sure enough, I did. So, you know, I wasn't going to turn that opportunity down. Um, so, you know, I had to make 145 in four days. It was it was pretty tough. But but I did it. And um, my management, you know, they, they, they did their half. They, they, they put my uh, name in their air. And they, they gave me the opportunity that I've been working for my whole life. So all in end, it was a good uh, good debut, I feel like. Who gave you the call to let you know that you were getting the call to the UFC? Um, Sean Shelby. He, he reached out to uh, Peter Welch, and um, Peter texted me and said, hey, yeah, I think you got the fight. Can you get an MRI tomorrow? <laughs> and basically that's how it happened. I, I was running around on New England trying to get all my medicals done, and I had to get them all done by that day. And if I didn't get done by that day, they were going to call the fight. Um, you know, I ran around, got my eye exams, I got CAT scans, MRIs, you know, I started my weight cut immediately, um, and boom, you know, I got it done that day, and I got my weight to 145. When you get that text message from Peter, is there part of you like, am I dreaming about this? Is this really happening? Oh, man, yeah, it, it was so surreal. My Instantly, my heart, my heart just started going crazy, my legs became heavy. It was just like, is this real? Like, <laughs> it still doesn't even feel real, um, like. I, I just fought the CES. Like it was just crazy fast, and I can't believe like I really got the opportunity to fight for the the big, you know, the biggest stage in the world. And um, it's still it's still kind of um, hard hard to believe, but you know, I did it, and uh, I'm just looking for my next opportunity now. When you, when you find out everything, you're getting to the UFC. Who was the first phone call you made to let them know? <laughs> Um, the first phone call I made to let them know was my mother. Um, my mom's been there through thick and thin. Uh, we've had a tough life growing up, and she's always raised me to be, a, you know, a strong man. My father wasn't really ever around, so it, it was it was really big to give her the call and let her know that you know we made it. And uh, it, it was emotional, but it was it was a very awesome phone call to make. You know, obviously the UFC debut, there there can be a lot of uh, nerves. They, they talk about octagon years, but do you kind of feel like because of everything had to happen so quick, you had to get all the medicals done and, and cutting weight, you know, in, in four days, do you kind of feel like because of that, that maybe you didn't have the, the typical jitters that a lot of fighters will have when they have, you know, six to eight weeks to think about their UFC debut? Yeah, no, to be honest with you, I, I didn't have any jitters. Um, I, I I can control my emotions very well. That's that's a huge part of the game is to be able to control your emotions and the mind games going on in your brain. I knew it was going to be a tough fight going in there. I just fought last week. I had a kind of little minor little issues going on in my body. I, I was exhausted. I was sick all last week. Um, making weight again was very tough. So my only issue really was just hoping my cardio was going to be good. But if 
performing on the level. I feel my talent is with those guys. I belong on that stage. CES, you know, I've been on television a couple of times in all my past three fights. I've had a lot of pressure on me. Um, I, I, the pressure was, I knew I was going to go in there and perform well. So really, the jitters wasn't really there. I, it was so surreal. kind of felt like I was in a dream. I just took a deep breath, made the walkout, took my shirt off, went in the cage, and it was go time. I wasn't even really nervous. Um, I was just more really nervous about my cardio just holding up. That was about it. And, of course, uh, the FICO's decision did not go your way. Before the decision's read, uh, did you did you kind of sit there you know, where you're like, man, it's a close fight. I might eke this one out. What's kind of going through your minds as you're getting ready to read the scorecards? Um, honestly, I, I feel like I, I won that fight by split decision. I think I took rounds one and three. I knocked him down a couple times round one. Um, I was landing the heavier blows. I was pushing the pace around round three. Uh, round two, he definitely beat my leg up a little bit, so he scored more on points. But um, I, 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 it was a very close fight. I, I don't know what judge scored all three rounds for him, but that was that was totally bogus. So it all in the end, I feel like he, you know if he did if he did win, he he would have won by split decision. But I feel like I should have got the split. I don't know, maybe they favored him more because it was it's his fourth fight, whatever second time fight in Boston, but. It was a very close fight, and to be honest, I am happy with my performance, my UFC debut, and I know I'll get another opportunity, and I'll be 100% ready for that one. For yourself and your team, when you go back and you watch a fight where, you know, hey, you feel you won it by decision, do you almost, do you kind of have to go back, look at the fight, and do you kind of try to look at it from a judge's perspective to say, okay, well, why did he score the fight for Rose? Is that part of the mindset? Um. Well, when I when I do look over the fight, he definitely, you know, he's he was a more of a point fighter. He he landed that leg kick over and over again. I was more ready of just eating the leg kick and just going for that knockout, that right hand. Um, my nose was bleeding. My nose was already broken from the fight before. <laughs> but uh, like, so it, the damage probably looked worse on my side. He scored more leg kicks. I think he got one takedown on me, but I stuck all of his other takedowns. I took him down one. So in a judge's perspective, I guess they would score the fight more of him just being landing more significant strikes. I think the leg kick honestly gave him the fight. Um, I probably should have checked those kicks a little bit more. I obviously have some things to work on still, um, but it was a definitely a close fight. And uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say he didn't. You know, he didn't win the fight. It could have gone either way, but. Um, in any judge's perspective, uh, if they want to give him the fight, they, they can give him the fight. But I was pushing the pace, and he landed more leg kicks. So in the end, I think that's what gave him the fight. One of the things we always hear in the fight business is you, you learn more um, about yourself and what you need to do in defeats as opposed to victories. For you, is there any major takeaways from this fight uh, in terms of maybe did you find something about yourself that maybe you didn't know you had? Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely know, um, I could have, I definitely know I could take a punch and I could sit in the pocket and throw, um, there's definitely some things that I need to work on, um, I'm definitely going to work on my jujitsu a little bit more, we didn't get to see it and all, but, um, I want to be like an anaconda, so I'm going to work on my jujitsu a little bit more and, uh, definitely work my, my boxing stance, I'm very excited. I'm very settled. I sit and I squat, and I and when a guy hits me, I look just to kind of fire at wherever his left hand is down, his right hand is down. I just like eat it and I fire. I'm gonna look to be more a little like uh, checking kicks, moving around a little bit more. But I mean, this was a very tough fight. I, I feel like I gained so much experience in just this fight. It's like I trained for a year. It, it feels like I, I my level has gone up so far. Um, so there's definitely good things that I did in this fight that I'm going to keep doing, and there's definitely things that I, I learned that I need to get better at. So, I mean, when I have a full training camp and I fix these holes and I keep doing what I did right, I feel like I'm going to be a nightmare for my next opponent. In terms of looking at a potential next fight, have you started to kind of set a, a timetable in your mind of when you would like your next fight to take place? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would, I, lo I would love to fight again in, in three months or – uh, you know, three or six months. I don't. I don't want to wait any longer than six months. I know there's a to the Vegas card in six months, um, but in three months would probably be a good opportunity. Um, 
but yeah, so I, I mean, I would just love to heal up. Take, I'm taking this week off and get right back in it, and I'm going to start training, fixing these holes and game planning, and uh, whatever opponent they have in mind for me, you know, I don't really care as long as I get full camp for them. You know, I'll fight any time. When we had you on the show last, of course, we kind of talked about the nickname you had been given, Killer B. And you said, you know, look, going to the UFC, that's, you know, obviously Ben Saunders already has that. Uh, you yeah. changed your nickname. But also, I, I saw uh, on your Facebook page that uh, I know you, you don't want to uh, have to do this, but uh, you and, and Ben got to hang out at the hospital after the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was very cool. Um, yeah, out of respect for Ben, you know, he already had, he was the original Killer B. And, um, you know, I had that nickname in the local scene, and once I got the call up to the big show, I, I, you know, I was talking to him on Twitter, and he was like, he said, you know, the name's taken. Out of respect, I felt like I was just going to go back to my original nickname that my grandfather used to call me as a kid, which was Crash. I was, you know, I was always getting hurt. I was always doing something crazy, so he called me Crash. And out of respect, I just kind of went back to the original name that my grandfather gave me, and uh it was funny that we both ended up seeing each other in the the, um, the hospital. It was pretty cool. We got a nice little photo. Um, but, yeah, it was really cool to see Ben. He's a really cool dude. And, uh, it was nice to talk to him and finally meet him. Final thing, Kyle. really do appreciate you coming on the MMA Report here on Radio Influence. Out of everything that happened in your UFC debut, is there one moment that uh, you're going to remember for the rest of your life? Like, you know, 20, 30 years from now, you, you sit back and tell the family stories. Is there one thing about the, that whole week that you're going to kind of always remember? Um, I mean, it, it was so fast. It was just so spontaneous. And just I was just kind of going through the motions. And I didn't really get to take it take any of it all in but um i mean walking out in my hometown in the garden was pretty surreal you know, it was it was amazing and i it really felt like all my hard work has paid off and i made it and uh walking to the cage there was this a handicapped kid who was in a wheelchair the front row and uh you know he stuck his hand out and i shook his hand and just you know it was just it was really cool just to to be able to touch someone like that and they they look at they look at you like you're a god and you're you're invincible. But you know I look at this kid and all the all the strength that he had and I'm just performing for him. It was kind of an honor and it was nice to just to touch touch someone in that way. So that's a way that that's something I'll probably remember forever. And um, that's the type of athlete that I want to be. You know I, I have a voice now, so I kind of want to be positive and uh, touch people's lives and uh, let them know that they can push through things. And, of course, we'll look forward to seeing your next fight in the UFC. Kyle, really appreciate time, and I'm sure we'll be talking again soon, man. Awesome, man. Thank you. I appreciate it.